By the end of this video, you would have learned to create a curved canvas and set it up with UI interaction using the Oculus SDK. You would also get a better understanding of how exactly all this works. So let's get started. Creating a curved canvas requires us to add a lot of components to various game objects. And so, I'm going to take some time to explain the functions of those components and try and help you understand how exactly they work. However, if you're here for the practical stuff, then feel free to jump to the next chapter. Here's an overview of all the different components that have to be added to the different game objects. And based on their functions, they can be grouped into three categories. And the first one are the surfaces. These components create a geometric surface in 3D space. It acts as a collision surface for the interactors without having to rely on Unity's physics. So as the name suggests, the cylinder, cylinder surface and the collider surface components create a cylindrical surface and make sure that the surface can be interacted with. The next category is curved canvas. So these components helps in converting a regular plane canvas into a curved one. The canvas render texture component renders a given canvas to a render texture. The canvas cylinder component takes the render texture and dynamically creates a mesh and resizes it to fit the unity canvas. The canvas mesh renderer component then takes the render texture and the generated mesh and maps them to a mesh renderer. This component has several render modes like alpha blended, underlay and alpha cutout each with its unique use cases. The pointable canvas mesh component remaps the event on the curved surface to the events of the underlying canvas. So to sum it all up, it's going to take a flat canvas and create a curved canvas and then make sure that the events are mapped together. The last category is the Unity Canvas integration. So these components allow the Oculus SDK to interact with Unity Canvas. So obviously we don't have a mouse in VR for us to interact with the UI. Instead, we use Ray Interaction or Poke Interaction. The Ray Interactable component component defines the surface of the object being raycasted against and the pointable canvas component converts the raycasted events into unity canvas events using the pointable canvas module component. Alright, I hope that this explanation helped you get a better understanding of these components. Now let's jump into Unity. Alright, so here I have my Unity project open which has already been set up with the Oculus SDK. You can check out this video over here to see how exactly that's done. Now in order to set up the scene, let's go ahead and delete the main camera. And in the project window, we'll search for large room. And then select the prefab, drag and drop it into your hierarchy. Similarly, let's go ahead and search for interaction rig OVR. We're going to select the interaction rig OVR full synthetic and select that and drag and drop it in the hierarchy as well. Next, the skybox does not look that good. So we're going to change that. So we'll search for skybox and gradient skybox. Select it and drag and drop it into your scene. Alright, so with that we have the scene set up. Now to create a curved canvas, we'll go ahead and right click, create an empty game object and call it as curved canvas. And the first thing to do here would be to create a cylindrical surface. And to do that, you can click on add component, search for cylinder, add that. And we'll add another component which is going to be cylinder surface. Drag and drop this over here. Now the facing field basically tells us to in which direction the hit will be registered. Is it going to be registered from the outside or from the inside? So we're going to select it from the inside. It's based on your use case. Now the height is going to determine how tall you want your surface to be. Uh, setting it to zero will make sure that it's going to be infinite. Now that we have a surface, let's go ahead and create an interactable canvas. So we'll right click on it, create an empty game object. We'll call this as interactable canvas. And inside this, we'll go ahead and create a canvas. Then select the canvas and select the canvas component. Here we want to make sure that the render mode is going to be world space. We can set the position to 000 and we will scale it down to 0.02 or maybe 0.002. Now I'd like to keep the width as 780 cross 480. Now this is totally depending upon how big you want your canvas to look like. Now we'll select the interactable canvas and the curved canvas. So we want the curved canvas to be at its origin. So we'll set this to 00 and 0 and we want it to be at a height of 1.5. Next, we also want the radius to be 1.5. There we go. Next, you can select the interactable canvas. Now, we don't want it to be here. We want it to be back by 1.5 as well. So we'll set the Z value to 1.5. Perfect. So now if I select the curved canvas, you can see that the surface kind of is in line with this. It really does not matter, but it's good to have it clean. All right, so now let's add some UI elements to our canvas. So select the canvas, right click, Select UI and the first thing that we want to add is a panel so that it's some transparent and then we can we can make out the UI elements more clearly. Then we'll right click on once again, select UI and let's go ahead and add a button. We will resize it and let us move it somewhere over here. Similarly, I'm going to add a slider and a scroll view as well.
Now to create a curved canvas, select the canvas game object and add a component canvas render texture. Now this requires a canvas so we'll select it, drag and drop it over here. Now it's going to give you a warning saying that the layer that is included in the render is not the same as the rendering layer that we have selected here. So it means that if we check the panel button or the slider, all of them are going to be in the default layer. So we'll select the canvas and click on auto fix and this should automatically fix the layer for us. All right, next you can right click on the canvas and let's create an empty game object. We'll call this as mesh. So here we have created a render texture. Now the next thing that we want to do is create a mesh and in order to do that, you can search for canvas cylinder. This is the game object that we need. Now this requires a canvas render texture, which we have over here. It needs a mesh filter. So let's go ahead and add that. It also needs a mesh collider. So we'll add that as well. And then we can reference all of them over here. Now for the cylinder, we have already added to the curve canvas. So we'll select that and drag and drop it over here. Now for the orientation, you can either select vertical or horizontal depending upon your use case. So now if I click on the play button, you'll be able to see that these components are going to create a mesh, which is cylindrical in shape and it's going to fit the exact canvas size over here. Now that we have a render texture and a curved mesh, we can use the canvas mesh renderer to render the curved canvas. And to do that, select the mesh game object and add the component over your canvas mesh renderer. It needs a render texture which we can get from the canvas game object, a mesh renderer which we are going to go and add right now. Select it, drag and drop it in here, a canvas mesh which is going to be the canvas cylinders and the rendering mode can be left to alpha cutout. Now you can change it based on what you'd like to have. And now if you press the play button, you can see that it's created a curved canvas for us. And also if I select the interaction rig over here and move it slightly above, you can see that even in VR, you'll be able to see both the flat and the curved canvas. Now in order to fix this, you can exit the play mode, select canvas, and here you'll be able to see one more warning which says that the culling mask has to be changed or else you'll be able to see it twice. So you can click on auto fix. So basically it's going to go in here and it's going to select the left eye an anchor and uncheck the UI from culling mask. Same thing for the left and right eye as well. And now if I press the play button in the scene view, you'll still be able to see it twice, but inside of VR, the user will be able to see it just once. However, this looks really blurry and there's a fix for that as well. So you can select the canvas and here you can increase the pixel per unit from 100 2000 and then it's going to come back to its original clarity all right so now you can exit the play mode and after that make sure to set this value back to thousand now in order to make the canvas intractable there are several things that we need to do first is to make sure that this mesh can be collided with and to do that we need to add the component collider surface and this needs a mesh collider so drag and drop this over here Next, select the interactable canvas and let us add the ray interactable component. Along with this, we need the pointable canvas component and the pointable canvas mesh component. Now, in order to reference this, the surface refers to the collider surface, which is present in the mesh game object. So we'll drag and drop this over here. The pointable element is going to be the pointable canvas mesh. So let's drag and drop this over here. This requires a canvas. So we'll add the canvas and this requires a canvas mesh which is going to be generated from the mesh over here. And finally, it needs a forward element, which is going to be the pointable canvas. Now this is optional. Uh, even if you press play, it's going to add automatically, but it's always better to reference it beforehand. All right, now the last thing to do here is to add the ray interactors itself. So in the project window, we can search for ray interactors, select the hand ray interactor and drag and drop it inside left hand and interactors left. Same thing for the right hand as well. And then select the hand interactors left and add this to the interactor group. Same thing for the right hand once again. All right, so to test this out in VR, I have already connected my quest with Airlink. Now, if you're not sure how that's done, then you should definitely check out this video over here. So now if I press play and let's test this out. So here I'm in the scene and I am able to interact with the canvas, but not with the UI. And I know exactly why that's happening. So let us go ahead and exit the play mode, select the event system, and we need to add a component, which is going to be the pointable canvas module. So this component makes sure that all the rain tractor hits are converted into unity events. So now if I press the play button, and as you can see here, I'm able to interact with the UI elements as well, which is super cool. So if you want more curved canvas, all you need to do is select the interactable canvas, duplicate it, bring it towards the side, 
and let us rotate it by 45 and I think we can bring it slightly forward as well somewhere over here duplicate this again bring it towards the left side and this time is going to be minus 45 let us move it here like this all right I think this should work so now if I press the play button and I'm surrounded by three curved canvases which looks really nice. I think given an option between flat canvas and curved canvas I definitely go for the curved one. Because it has some depth to it, it adds on to the experience. Anyway, that's my personal preference. Alright, so that's it for this video. If you have any questions then do let us know in the comments below. And as always, I will see you in the next one.